Good evening, everybody. Um, the Dirksen Award is presented each year for the best reporting in, of Congress. And um, I could tell you a lot about Everett Dirksen, who was my grandfather, but he speaks for himself. He had curly hair and a deep voice. And the words, he was ahead of his time and um, every week, recorded a television message uh, for his constituents back home starting in the 50s. And he would send these messages on film back to every station in Illinois every week. And every station ran them for free uh, with no sponsorship. And um, it was, uh, it, it was a, a brilliant way to communicate with his constituents. So uh, every message and every film that I've gone through could be used today, his speeches could be used today. So let's take a look at this curly haired man and what his message was this week. So you see this debt is very important to confidence in our system, to confidence on the part of holders of the debt abroad and to the continued well-being of our country. That's why how abstruse this subject sounds. And it must sound a little academic to you. It's always a little difficult to dramatize it and to bring it back home. It's a little like the fellow who went in to see his lawyer, said, I want to sue my neighbor. He said, what for? He said, he called me a rhinoceros. When was this? He said, 13 years ago. Well, where have you been all this time? He said, I didn't see a rhinoceros till yesterday. You see, it didn't come within his experience. And so this doesn't always come within the experience of all people. And therefore, I know it sounds just a little academic. But it is important, and that's the reason I like to report on it. Since it's a public debt, it's your debt, you and I own it, and it is a matter of deep concern to us. It's good to visit with you again and to make this report. So now you see why there is a Dirksen Award. The uh, first Dirksen Award goes to David Farenthold of the Washington Post, who wrote a series of articles to see whether Congress and the White House had made the kinds of hard decisions that were supposed to come with austerity, eliminating programs with no obvious merit. David Farenthold, congratulations. My sincere thanks, first of all, to the National Press Foundation. Uh, it is such a huge honor to receive an award in the name of Everett Dirksen, uh, a man of many, many virtues, one of which is that virtue most prized by journalists, color. Everett Dirksen was colorful. He made spoken word albums. He appeared in a bad Hollywood movie about an alien invasion, playing a senator during an alien invasion. He, he also campaigned tirelessly to make the humble American marigold our country's national flower. We lack his like in Washington today, as you probably know. Uh, today's Senate is so boring, in fact, that it took in Al Franken. Everyone knows Al Franken, and endowed him with the personality and pizzazz of the humble American marigold. Uh, I just wanted to say, I, explain a little bit about the series that I wrote last year. She said it was about the limits of austerity, looking for the places where the president and Congress were willing to cut things in the name of overall budget cuts, to, to look for those hard choices and see if they were being made. So I went looking, in other words, for the most cuttable, most expendable, least necessary parts of the federal apparatus. Uh, I wrote about a plane that the government paid people not to fly. I wrote about the National Raisin Reserve. Uh, I wrote about a new uniform that the Navy tried out, a new camouflage uniform which the Navy paid for despite the fact that it was blue and would only camouflage people when they fell in the water. Uh, <laughs> And I wrote about a magician in Missouri and a new USDA rule that required magicians with one rabbit to write a federally approved disaster plan for their rabbit <laughs> and to save, showing how they would save the rabbit from tornadoes, fires, floods, biblical plagues, chemi chemical leaks, uh, 
I found in most cases that even these white elephants were sort of too much for the president and Congress to get rid of. And so as Congress cut spending overall, they often failed to make the hard choices that spending cuts were supposed to force, which was what parts of government can the government no longer afford? Um, I wanted as a last thing to say thank you to my editors, Terrence Samuel, Steve Ginsburg, Cameron Barr, uh, Kevin Merida, and Marty Barron, uh, to Catherine Weymouth, our publisher, Donald E. Graham, our former chairman of the board, and our, our new owner, Jeff Bezos, uh, to my parents, Peter and Jeannie Farenthal, to my sister, Jennifer Farenthal, who are in the audience, and to my wife, Elizabeth, who stayed at home alone with a toddler while I went to Missouri to ask a magician about his rabbit <laughs> and, and about his disaster plan. So thank you. <laughs>